Okay, so this is a real quick tutorial just to get you started on the second idea project in Ableton Live. I'm going to assume that you've already taken care of things like saving your new set correctly. I'm going to assume that you've taken care of things like making sure that the audio interface, if you're using one, or the built-in output has been selected in the preferences, preferences tab of live and all of those basic setup things. If they're not, you're going to want to go back and do that and if you're not sure how, remember you can also consult with earlier projects that deal with Ableton Live in order to work that out or obviously you can see me during class anytime and I'm happy to help you. In any case, what we're basically needing to do here is we're going to create a very basic drum track and we're going to do it a little differently than we've done in the past so that you get used to a couple of other features in Ableton. And then once that's been created, each person in your group is going to simply add in their own part that works well on top of that so that's rhythmically in sync, uh, that's in tune, and so that when you combine a bunch of parts together, it all makes musical sense. And we've been talking about that in, in broader terms and general characteristics. But for now, this video is really just about how do we get that drum beat into Ableton so that you can get this second idea worked out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my left side. I'm going to go to Instruments. I'm going to choose Impulse, and I'm just going to take Backbeat Room. It's a drum kit. I'm going to drop this onto one of my two MIDI tracks here. I'm just going to put it on the first one. And as soon as I do that, uh, as we've seen before, it populates the lower area here with an instrument. And remember, also on the far left here, there is the little info view that will tell you uh, everything about wherever you put your mouse in Ableton. It's a really cool feature. It tells you what the thing is that you're hovering over and tells you uh, a bit about how to use it and things of that nature. So in any case, we've got our drum kit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this little key up here, this little keyboard up here, is yellow. If it's not pressed, what I'm about to do will not work. But as long as it's pressed, I can now use my computer keyboard as my typing keyboard as a kind of MIDI controller so that I can listen to the sounds. Uh, I can certainly use a push unit to do this or a launch pad or any number of other MIDI controllers. Even keyboard controllers will work for this. But to keep it simple, I want to just keep this uh, with the computer itself. So I'm using the computer's keyboard. And this middle row here, the one that starts with A, so that gives me a kick, S is the snare, and so on. And you'll notice that as I go up the, the keys to the right, it moves which instrument I'm triggering uh, as well. Now, these are not going to be uh, in any way velocity sensitive. It's either just the same value for each one. You press it, you get a sound, but at least you can get some basic patterns going and it's ease of use kind of thing is, is, a, is a clever and pretty cool little utility in Ableton. Very similar uh, to the keyboard uh, typing, musical typing keyboard that you have in GarageBand. In any case, so we know we have sound now, we have everything uh, working. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a loop of a clip that we can start putting in this drum beat. So the easiest way to do that is right up here, we know that we're record enabled because A, we heard sound, and B, we're record enabled on the bottom. Also, instead of being squares here for stop buttons, these are all going to be record buttons. And in fact, if I take this off record enable, you'll notice they all turn into squares. Whichever track is record enabled, the clips, the empty clips, become uh, recordable now. So what I'm going to do is rather than click the record uh, button here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the actual um, clip itself, double click, and it, it starts by default and it gives me a one measure loop. And I can see this now at the bottom. I can also see, because I have the fold button engaged here, turned yellow, I can also see all of my available instrument tones based on the backbeat room that I already inserted. And in fact, if I hit these white keys, I can actually check those as well in the same way that if I use the keyboard, I can do it that way. So it just kind of depends on which you prefer. In any case, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now place my kick drum. And I'm going to put this very simply on just beats three and beats one. So here's beat three, and here is beat one. And now I've got this, and I can play the clip, and I can hear beats one and beat three. If I want to turn on the metronome, you can hear that it's perfectly in sync and that aligns perfectly with the grid there. I can also now start adding in other parts of the beat. So I'm going to let this keep playing and while it's playing, I'm going to put in the snare drum on beats two and four. 
there's beat two, and there's beat four. Now at this point, my metronome is kind of redundant because I'm on the quarters with every other sound, so I'm gonna turn it off. And now I've got this click. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna add in a hi-hat. So I'm gonna put in a hi-hat here on one, the end of one, and so on, and I'm just double clicking these in. Now I can just leave that beat. That's good enough for what I need for this project. I can make things more complicated if I want. I can add in additional hi-hat notes, uh, such as that. I can do any number. I can add in additional kick drum beats. What matters here as this is playing is just that it's steady and it makes sense. And don't get too lost in this right now and overdo the, the drum pattern. What we want is something that you can play along to and that will make sense. Now, I'm going to stop my set for a moment. And I am going to now look at these other tracks here. The next step is to now play something, either a virtual instrument or I can bring in audio from outside the computer using an interface and I can do microphones or I can do guitars or whatever it is I want. But I need to add something in and keep in mind for the rest of this project what you want is for everything to line up. So you start with your beat and then you want to add things on top of it. So you're going to want to make sure your instruments are in tune. You're going to want to make sure that the parts work together. You may want to consider doing the GEC project work you've been doing. Keep the chords simple. Remember this is about keeping it all in control and then seeing how far you can take it. One other thing to keep in mind, we're not adding clips vertically. We're adding clips horizontally now. So what each person, and you can add more tracks as you need to. So in order to add those new tracks, if you don't have enough here, let's say you've got one person who's doing a virtual instrument on a MIDI track, and you've got three other people doing external audio tracks, you're still gonna need another track. So you can go to create and you can do insert audio track and it'll put another one here. Keep in mind too, you're gonna to wanna to label these. So I would suggest that you go to the track that's yours, you can right click on it, you can select rename, and then you can call it whatever you want. So I can call this uh, Richard uh, Vox for vocals, if that's what it is, if I'm gonna use a mic and record. But whatever I'm gonna do, I wanna make sure that each of these tracks is labeled. Then when I wanna record on it, remember to make sure that it's record enabled. Whatever track is record enabled is going to allow you to um, record to it. So here with our MIDI tracks, again, if I record enable here, you'll notice clips, and this works for audio too, any type of track. Also, don't be afraid to go back onto the info page and check out all the other instructions that we've got for the older projects that go over things like the interfaces and plugging in microphones or guitars and things of that nature, and whatever else you need to do in Ableton or any other DAW. So, that's a second idea in Ableton to get you started. Good luck, and I'm excited to hear what you guys come up with.